And can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Commissioner Bagley. Here, present. And the city. Farmington Hill. Thank you. Carol. Charles. I think you're on mute, Commissioner Charles. Charles? Yep. She sent out a message. She said she's here from Southfield. She's having audio issues. Okay. Thank you. Herzog? Here. Royal Oak. LaFontaine? Here. Richmond, Michigan. Ooh. Long? McGilvery? Here, Madison Heights. Nash? Here in Farmington Hills. Quarles? Here, Southfield. Stokes? Are you having difficulty with the audio, Mr. Stokes? I think he's trying to call. Okay. Um, I'll count him here. I'll find out where he's from later. Um, and Commissioner Vanderbeen. Here in Water Sunny Waterford Township. We have nine present, Commissioner. Okay, thank you. Can we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? <clears throat> the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty for justice for all. Lance? Yes. Hi. I was having I'm having trouble with my audio on my okay. computer. Okay, what, what city are you, what city are you located in? West Bloomfield. Okay, that's we need that uh with the uh, Open Meetings Act that uh, you have to state where you're coming from on this uh, virtual meeting. So okay, right. with it. With I'm, in Stokes, I'm, yep, I'm in got West got Bloomfield in Oakland County. Okay, very good. Thanks. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. You just got emailed today some new items that were added to the agenda. Those were G, H, and I. So uh, do we have a motion for approval on the agenda? So move with uh, additions, orals. Uh, moved by, by Coral, supported by Vanderveen. Any uh, any corrections on anything? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Like sign for those opposed. Aye. Motion carries. Next, we have uh, approval of the minutes from February 3rd, 2021. Is there a motion? Moved by uh, Herzog. Some more quarrels. Supported by Bagley. Um, any uh, discussion or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Like sign for those opposed? Aye. Okay. Uh, next item is public comment. Is there any public comment at all? At this time, there is no one on the public comment line. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item is uh, introduction of our new appointment to the Parks Commission. Uh, Mr. Stokes, um, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello, I'm Lance Stokes. I reside in West Bloomfield, Michigan. 
and I'm a research scientist and environmental engineer and consultant. And I'm very pleased to be uh, to have been appointed to the Parks and Rec uh, Commission. I thank all those who voted for me and for the naysayers. I would hope that my participation will, over time, change their mindset. Thank you very much. Thank you, and welcome aboard. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we move into uh, presentations and recognitions. Uh, the first one we have is M Parks Award presentation. Melissa, you want to take that over? Yep. I got it, Gary. Okay. Daniel. It's our pleasure and honor to uh, recognize two local uh, officials who uh, have made a significant contribution to enhancing, enhancing resident quality of life through their promotion of parks and recreation. And on the uh, call today, we have uh, Bob De Palma, the supervisor of Groveland Township, and George Cullis, the supervisor of Holly Township. And it is, we are recognizing their efforts in helping us establish the Holly Oaks ORV Park uh, for Bob. This has probably been a eight or nine year uh, uh, destiny that we've been on. And uh, George has been with us for the last four or five years um, from uh, Holly Township. The park uh, opened, as we all know, in September. And uh, through their, their vision of what the ORV park uh, could bring to their residents and to the uh, uh, residents of Oakland County and the state of Michigan, uh, their vision of increasing revenue for existing businesses and potentially starting some uh, new commercial opportunities, which in in final result would uh, be a larger tax base for their uh, communities. In addition, um, George Cullis and uh, and uh, um, Bob have helped uh, tremendously with a uh, effort to create a heritage and recreation uh, corridor, the Dixie Byway, going through their uh, communities. They're also uh, promoting the extension of uh, sewer and water from uh, uh, Genesee County to support uh, business development and commercial development in Northern Oakland County. Also for the last uh, three years, we've been working with uh, George Cullis on the effort to relocate the historic uh, Ernst Barn from its current location here at Waterford Oaks out to the uh, Holly Township Historic Farmstead Park on Holly Road north of the uh, village of Holly. So please join me in recognizing these two uh, local elected officials for their efforts in promoting parks and recreation in the state of Michigan. Thank you. Thank you so much to uh, Bob De Palma and George for being here today and uh, for all you've done uh, for our ORV park in particular. But uh, thanks so much. You're, you're uh, great supervisors, and we look forward to continue working with you. And the, the plaques will be delivered uh, shortly, gentlemen. Thank you very much. It was uh, nice to be recognized, and uh, I, I think it's been a great opportunity to show that the state, the county, and local municipalities could work together very well for a common good. And I think we all pretty much ended up with what we wanted out of the project. So I was very pleased to be a, a part of this. And I want to thank I want to thank the parks as well. I would like to tell you that I had a phone call this morning uh, from Congressman uh, Alyssa Slotkin's office, and we have the ears of the Appropriations Committee in Washington, D.C. 
regarding um, some money for this sewer project. Uh, this is an unusual project because we're not being, as government, we're not being responsive. We're being proactive to an area that is underdeveloped at this point, but these sewers would definitely lead to um, more development in that area. And uh, that was good news to know that we've had their their ear and that they're looking at it and they've been in contact with Brian Comer in Hoover County. So everybody cross your fingers and let's hope that happens. Thanks, George. Thanks, George. Okay, next item that we have is for uh, Perks Award, M Perks Award uh, presentation, and that's uh, for Mike, Mike Boyd. Um, yes, I've got Anna, it. You, you, you got it? Okay. okay. Uh, in early uh, February, the Michigan Recreation and Park Association, M Parks, had their uh, virtual annual conference. And uh, as part of the conference, there is a uh, recognition for uh, communities and individuals who exhibit uh, um, great efforts and uh, great programs. So uh, this year, Oakland County Parks and Recreation uh, was the recipient of a number of awards. And we're going to start out with uh, Mike Boyd who was the 2021 Park Resource Leadership Award. Uh, Mike has been with us uh, for nearly 30 years and uh, probably 11 years prior to that as a part-time employee. Um, he has been the chairperson and a member of the Park uh, Resource fo Focus Group for a number of years. Uh, his uh, group, has organized a number of uh, training and recognition opportunities uh, for professionals in the uh, state. Uh, he is also the park supervisor currently for Rose Oaks and uh, Highland Oaks. And he's also a fellow Northern Michigan University graduate. Go Mike. <laughs> thank you, Dan, for that, all that. Yes, push on the last part, but thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, now we'd like to rec recognize Kelly Moss. Uh, she is uh, being recognized for the program that uh, she and her staff have uh, put together called Quest for Adventure, which won the 2021 Innovative Programming Award. And as you can imagine, the challenges that uh, uh, recreation programmers have had because we try to bring people together and during COVID we were trying to keep people apart. So um, through uh, their efforts and uh, uh, they were able to uh, develop this program to uh, innovatively have scavenger hunts throughout areas of uh, Oakland County and uh, had a number of uh, families get outside and get in out of doors. So through their efforts, we received a lot of uh, very enthusiastic uh, feedback from the participants. And uh, it has kind of been the platform for us to uh, do additional uh, programs. So Brandy and her group also uh, were recognized uh, along with uh, Sandy Dory and uh, Carol Egbo and Sarah Malin. They also uh, received an award for uh, COVID-19 engagement and their program was called I Spy. And so it uh, helped the uh, participants engage in virtual uh, efforts of a physical game of I Spy and uh, we were able to highlight some of the uh, park assets throughout the uh, park system. So congratulations to uh, that group, Sandy, Carol, and Sarah. Okay, congratulations and thank you to all of you, Mike, um, Kelly, Sandy, Sarah, and Carol. Um, Well-deserved awards and we appreciate all your help on it.
Uh, next, we have uh, B1, which is Steve Langless, long-term part-time employee. Dan? <laughs> yeah, he is uh, sitting right across from me, and uh, uh, Steve has been a uh, loyal part-time employee for Oakland County Parks for the past uh, 38 years. I had the pleasure of hiring him uh, back in uh, 1983. And over, uh, over time, he has been a wealth of knowledge and uh, has worked very hard to uh, assist the park system, create a, a number of uh, great things. We have a, uh, a, a plaque for him that uh, I'm going to uh, read here shortly, but I really want to take this time to uh, acknowledge all of the part-time staff Oakland County Parks and Recreation would not exist without the uh, support and the effort and the variety of uh, skills and abilities that uh, volunteer staff, or excuse me, part-time staff bring to the table every day. And uh, their efforts, you know, really make the park system go, especially during the summer when we effectively turn the uh, operations of the par parks over to uh, part-time staff. So I hope this is something that uh, can continue through the years to periodically stop and uh, remember the importance that uh, part-time employees bring to our uh, park system and all the uh, great things that they're able to uh, provide for us. So the Oakland County Parks and Recreation Commission and staff thank Steve Langlois for 38 years of service to the citizens of Oakland County. Steve has been a jack of all trades and everyone's handyman since the day he was hired. With a chauffeur's license, a pesticide application certificate, he has done everything from spraying weeds, driving buses, delivering uh, stages, setting up tents, operating heavy equipment. He's a forward thinker with uh, historical and intimate knowledge of the park system. He works independently without any need or little need for direction. Steve is the behind the scenes guy who sets up all the major events, fire and ice, marshmallow drop, grand openings, Michigan Senior Olympics, and most re recently he helped shape Hollyoaks ORV Park. Steve's ready, smile, cheerful, can-do attitude, and a myriad of contributions are much appreciated by the staff and the Parks and Recreation Commission. Thank you, Steve. Awesome. Yeah. And he's got, he's got a little plaque here. Awesome. Desiree, can you take a picture? I'm just teasing. Yeah, all set. I got it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Steve, for all your many years. And uh, we still have your phone number, just so you know. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. It's not called in. It's on speed dial. Dan, Dan tell Steve we'll go, we're going to resume fire and ice next year. We'll look forward to seeing him. Uh-oh. <laughs> that, that'll be a good one. He was thinking about retiring, but I don't think so. Okay, next item we have is um, Commissioner uh, okay. Charles. Thank you, thank you. Uh, some of what I was looking for, you did exactly, but with such a historic uh, working time in the county, I mean, majority of my life, I like to see if Mr. Steve, whatever his last name was, uh, if he would like to say a few words. I mean, I'd love just to hear from him. Uh, some words of wisdom. What what can we share with the future generations that gave you such longevity? He's he's never been one to shy away from a camera. Can you see well, words? It, it's always been good. It always helps to have somebody that uh, can help you bring along yourself. Dan's helped me through a lot. I was a youngster in those days, and uh, the biggest thing is is um, um, you might not like what somebody says, you might not uh, care what they think or what it is, but you always got to agree with them until you turn around and then you turn around and 
you got to take care of that problem one way or the other. But you just got to know when to say when. <laughs> okay, thanks, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Steve. Okay, next item we have is uh, recognition of Mr. Cost, and unfortunately, he had an emergency today and couldn't make it. So we'll postpone that till the April meeting, and he'll be there, and we can uh, uh, recognize him then. There is one more though that's got just a few more years than Steve Langless has got, uh, and that's our our leader, Dan Stencil. This is his last meeting today, and yep. uh, I I've got a proclamation here that I would like to read uh, for Dan. And it says, whereas Daniel Stencil has served the Oakland County Parks and Recreation for more than 43 years, whereas Daniel Stencil has held various positions within the organization since 1977 until he became promoted the executive officer in 2006, and whereas Daniel J. Stencil leadership has helped create and provide outdoor positive recreation experiences for over 2 million visitors in our Oakland County Parks each year, and an additional 1.6 residents by way of outreach services. Whereas Daniel J. Stencil has developed professional relationships with local, state, national organizations that emphasize community collaborations so that all residents of all abilities have access to quality recreation experiences that enhance the quality of life. And whereas Daniel Stencil, Daniel Stencil has served in leadership roles in parks and recreation professional organizations for the benefit of all individuals working in the field, including M Parks, the Michigan uh, Recreation and Parks Association, uh, the Michigan Association of County Parks, Recreation Officials, uh, the National Recognition Park Association, and the American Academy of Parks and Recreation Administrators. And whereas the Oakland County Parks Commission and staff work toward the expansion of trails in Oakland County, protect natural resources, and support economic prosperity through the provisions of seasonal jobs, part-time and full-time jobs, and business operations that, that support Oakland County. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Gary McGilvery, Chairman of the Oakland County Parks and Recreation Commission, as well as the entire Parks Board, do hereby proclaim that Daniel Stencil is honored for his 43 years of service to the residents of Oakland County. Thanks, Dan. Well, thank you all, and I'm uh, I'm very moved by your kind words, and uh, I'm also very pleased uh, that you would uh, consider having a uh, cover of your commission agenda book plastered with some joker's face all over it. But uh, it it comes in time, and you know, there's uh, times when it, it's time to say goodbye, but I can truly tell you that uh, this has never been a job. It's uh, always been something that uh, I look forward to improving the uh, lives of uh, residents, no matter uh, uh, their abilities or disabilities. And uh, I'm, just I'm just moving a thousand miles away, but uh, if I'm just a phone call away and uh, I truly have enjoyed the uh, relationships with all of uh, the staff, especially Sue has been locked at my hip for the last uh, 15 plus years. And uh, it, we've got a great staff. Again, uh, the idea of uh, remembering these part-time staff that really do all of the great work and uh, create all of the experiences and maintain all of our uh, facilities. So um, I will bid adieu and I, I thank you all for this opportunity. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. May I speak?
Mr. Yeah, Chair. Go ahead, David. Uh, I think I've known Dan for most, if not all, of those 43 years. Uh, and uh, he is the, uh, by my math, and Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, we had uh, Kenny Banana. I don't know if you came in under Ken or or under uh, Eric, Eric Reichel. Eric. We, we had those two, and then Ralph Richard, and now Dan. So in the over, what it was, 55 years or so, we've had a Parks Commission. We've only had four directors, which is, I don't know what, uh, every 12 years or so. They, the average is 12 years. It, I think that says two things. Um, one is we have good longevity in our system, and I think that's great that people have seen fit to stay in the DNA as a contribution. <laughs> Secondly, Dan, you're just, just time enough to leave. So before this, I'd have to vote no on your departure, but congratulations. <laughs> it's been a good run, my friend. <laughs> well, thank you. Somebody who's uh, a senior employee of the uh, part or the county. Thanks, Dave. Uh, I too would just just like to say, Dan, that you may be moving to Florida, but we expect at least four weeks time of you back here in Michigan volunteering for our parks organization. So I hope to hope to see you back to visit us. All right, thank you. Look forward to it. I wanted to also say that I've been uh, I've been with the county 16 years. Dan, you've always been there, and it's always been a friendly face, no matter what was going on. You were always a steady face in in the you know around this this uh, county, and I and I appreciate that, and I can see that it's always been a calling for you, and that's that's just it shows your dedication has always been there, and I I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, Dan. I just wanted to say um, thank you so much for your passion and just for um, being, you know, leading, you know, the Parks Department. Um, you, it, we truly appreciate you and it's been great working with you, even though it hasn't been as long as some of the others. You know, it's really been great working with you um, uh, while being on the board. So thank you. That's, you know, I'm pleased that we have such a, a diverse uh, commission now and representative of the uh, the folks that we uh, provide. So thank you so much. Yeah, wishing you the best. Uh, Dan, this is Nancy. Uh, thank you for all the, the time you helped me both as a uh, county commissioner and on the uh, on this board. Uh, there have been a number of questions that I had. Uh, some of them you had to dig a little deep to, <laughs> To get the answer for me, but uh, never did you hesitate. And thank you, and wish you the absolute best in whatever you do next. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item on our agenda is number nine capital improvement expense summary. Jeff? Are you there, Jeff? Jeff, Jeff is uh, balancing between uh, this meeting and a uh, a conference call. He may or may not be able to be on. We could bring him back if you need him. Uh, I don't think we need to, probably. But um, do we have a motion to receive and file the capital improvement expense summary? So moved. Moved by Herzog, supported by Bagley. Is there any questions that maybe somebody else could answer since Jeff's not here? Do we have any questions? Well, if you read uh, uh, page 22, pretty much defines that that uh, where what our position is currently. And uh, we will be revising with the uh, first quarter uh, financial forecast, our uh, uh, millage position. Okay. All right, with that, we'll move on to item 10. Uh, Mr. McGovern, can I get a vote, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, all in favor of the capital improvement expense report signify by saying aye. 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 
Like sign for those opposed. Motion carries. I'll shut my camera off if I can. Okay, next item is consent agenda. Uh, we have uh, items A through M. Are there any questions at all on the consent agenda? Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. I'm going to have to leave my camera off, Gary, because I, I, no one could hear me before. So it's something with my internet still. So. Okay. Are there Sorry. any questions? Are there any questions on the consent agenda? Hearing none, we need a motion to receive and file. Moved by Quarles, supported by Stokes. Yes. Um, okay, all in favor of the consent agenda? Uh, I guess we need a roll call vote for this. Um, yes, can sir. we have a roll call vote, Vicki? Sure, Commissioner Charles? Yeah. Herzog? Yes. Lafonte? Yes. Long? Long? She was just here a minute ago. Commissioner Long? Yes. I'll come back. Uh, okay, McGilvray? Yes. Nash? Yes. Quarles? Yes. Stokes? Yes. Vanderveen? Yes. And Bagley? Yes. We have 10 to 0, Commissioner or Chairman. In favor. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next item is on the regular agenda 11A, which is a presentation by golf. Uh, Results and recommendations for the Oakland County Golf Operations. I think I'm going to try to sign back in. Say what? Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Sue Wells. Uh, thank you, Commissioners. Uh, we would uh, first like to thank all of you for participating and reading uh, the results of the information that was compiled over the last uh, couple months. It was done uh, with the work of JJ, who is going to be making the presentation, but I can't uh, go without thanking uh, the staff, the chiefs, the supervisors from the golf course for their input as well as the general public from the surveys they completed. So at this time, I will turn it over to JJ. Thank you. It is such a pleasure to be with you today. This engagement accomplished over the last seven weeks was only made possible through the cooperation and assistance of Dan, Sue, Phil, Jim, Tom, and Aaron. It was just absolutely amazing all that we have gotten done within such a short period of time. While I have been allocated 45 minutes for today's presentation, I'm hoping that we can work through this because there are 18 agenda items on which you are going to vote. The thought that would be best is that as I cover each of the items, I'm gonna ask for comments uh, regarding those. And if there is any other points, Hearing none, we'll vote on all of them in the aggregate. Should there be any individual item where there is further discussion warranted for the efficiency of this meeting, we're going to table that item. And so today's lineup in terms of data, 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 what is your goal as a commission with respect to the operation of the golf courses, the 18 decisions? And then I want to visit with you about privatization and the pros and cons of such, and then we'll have the open discussion. And so I've been very fortunate. Just to summarize, I've been in 58 countries. I've seen over 6,000 golf courses, have written six books on how to run a golf course profitably. The presentation today would not have been made possible without the assistance of the commissioners, who we are so grateful. Never in my career have we literally sent out a preference card on items to be considered 
And the fact that you all responded speaks to your commitment and to the dedication to Oakland County and the golf courses. We also conducted and had workshop participants on February the 8th where the staff voted on these recommendations so that we could develop a consensus to present to you. It was sent to you on February 16th. We also had the great help of the management team who individually voted on these items to ensure that collectively we all have a vision for the future. All of the documentation that was delivered to you was the balance reference sheet on the 18 items for your consideration. We had given you a detailed data, data, data analysis of 93 slides that I'm sure that was overwhelming. And so I sent you the employee survey of 14 responses we got on each of those 18 items, as well as we got the input of 907 golfers and citizens in Oakland County. So I want to frame what we're here to do today. The average golf course, municipal golf course in America does 1.2 million in gross revenue, spends 1.1 million in expenses and generates about $100,000 a year in free cash flow. Unfortunately, your golf courses are not doing that. Each of your golf courses for four and a half 18 hole equivalents is only doing 726,000. You're short about a half a million dollars in revenue on each one of those golf courses. And as a result of that loss in revenue, on a net income basis, you have lost an average of $790,000 a year that is being supported through the millage and through the general fund and other allocations of capital. The question that was brought before us is, what is an acceptable annual loss after income depreciation? Because the cash flow over the last four years, you have lost $170,000 requiring support of the golf courses. Well, as you all know, two formulas to make sure that a golf course can be successful, either raise revenues or cut expenses. What we're presenting to you today has the potential of narrowing the cash flow deficit to break even if all of the recommendations are followed. We did a lot of financial modeling, and you can see that if all of these recommendations were adopted, that your cash flow before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization would be $575,000 if you achieve the 2020 rounds. If we were fortunate enough to do the 2020 19 rounds, you would actually generate almost $674,000 with the adoption of the recommendations. Now, any projection, people promise according to your hopes and perform according to your fears. That was a quote from a Frenchman. So these projections have all kinds of caveats with them. We don't know what's happening with COVID. We've seen what has happened with Texas and Mississippi the last two days that they've opened up the entire states. Will we be able to go to the Tigers baseball game? Are we gonna be able to see the Pistons or the Red Wings in terms of the audience in March and April and early May? What about restaurant, dining, movie theaters? Well, we are gonna bring an online reservation system for the first time where golfers are gonna be able to book that should help us generate additional revenue. We have no idea who any of your customers are. One of the tasks is to develop a customer database and so, Desiree can effectively market to them throughout the year to create loyalty. We're presuming we have the same number of playable golf days that reigns consistent with his nor historical norms and that the recommendations are actually implemented. <laughs> One of the problems of being a consultant is that as much as we care for you, as much as we want to see you be profitable, there's also um, usually a gap between what we recommend and the timetable for getting implemented. So with that having been said, the first key question is, what is your goal? Do you want a cash flow, cash flow plus debt, cash flow plus future capital? Or are you in a position on some of your courses even wanting to sell? So the conclusion has become really easy as to what you need to do because it's important to remember there are over 60 golf courses in the county. There are over 100 golf courses you compete against and that open park space, pools, library, the principal things that for which you're chartered, private enterprise is not going to engage in those. And it's a harsh reality that you can close all five of your golf courses and the golfers would not be deprived of the opportunity to play golf. It may be a little more expensive. They may have to travel a little bit further, but from a municipal standpoint, there is plenty of 
opportunities to play golf within Oakland County. So the question is, what is the financial target and where should you be at? Well, the commissioners felt 55% of you, meaning five and nine, felt that the courses should at least break even, and four of nine felt that they should be self-subsidizing. You can see the staff vote on the side. In, in looking at this, this is going to be something that these recommendations will be implemented over a two-year period of time, and you can see the top of the screen, it's going to be we're going to try to shoot for the goal of break even in 2021 and that this presentation is available for your review and I'm always available just to give me a call if you have any questions. I had the pleasure of talking with Commissioner Quarles, Commissioner Vanderbeen and Commissioner McGovray during this to kind of get their thoughts in terms of what was important. You are all welcome to call if you have questions. So we're looking at a target to get these implemented over a period of time. Well, the first question was, is the golf season. There's a lot of pressure brought on the golf courses to open up at the beginning of the first warm weather. I can say today that when I finish here, it's 60 degrees in Colorado. You're probably going to have warm weather the next couple of days. And so there's this rush for all of the bears who haven't played to open them up and give them the chance. But it really creates some efficiency in scheduling. Here. So having said all of that, by setting the standard, it makes far more efficient in the ability of labor scheduling. The turf's coming out of the winter. The bluegrass doesn't grow until the temperature starts averaging over 50 degrees. And so what I'm going to ask is, I cannot see you, but I presume um, Vicki and Commissioner, you can see those on the screen. Is there anybody that would like to discuss this? Are you okay establishing the golf season from the beginning of the second Saturday in April until November 15th? For the efficiencies that it will bring. Vicki, is there anybody that would like to discuss this further? Um, hmm. I don't see any hands raised. Dave. Perfect. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Vanderveen does. Mr. Vanderveen has his hand up. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, I, I, I hear you, JJ. Um, but I, I'm, I, I, I get it from the bluegrass standpoint. Uh, but grass being normal, uh, you mentioned the bears are ready to come out of hibernation and start playing. Uh, it really hurts to see other golf courses uh, have people lined up to play and out there having a good time and ours is, is not open. I, I, I'm i having a hard time with that part of the recommendation. I understand. But from the standpoint of when do you open? Is it next week? Where's the labor? We don't have the part times on staff. When do we begin to hire them? Well, we, we're looking at the first of April. Yeah. So the question is is that the second say, based on the weather forecast for this year, the efficiency of opening as a policy on the second Saturday in April until November 15th, the amount of incremental that you, revenue that you will generate is insignificant in relationship to the staging an event to open and creating the marketing buzz. And so therefore the standardization of the season and by the fact that usually what happens is that spring rates are introduced at a discount of 20 to 30 percent for getting these bears coming out of hibernation. And one of the recommendations is there are no spring rates this year so that we will be making up where we normally would have had discounted rates in April, we'll be making the full summer rates based on the improved conditions and the efficiency of labor. So I, are there any other questions on this or can I continue? I concur with that, with the rate part of it. Great, thank you. Hearing, are there any other hands raised, Vicki? Um, I don't see any at this time. Perfect. The next item is to approve rate increases. You can see the rates from 2020 to 2021 in terms of Glen Oaks. We're basically looking for Red Oaks staying the same, a $4 increase at Lion Oaks, and $7 increase is at Glen Oaks and Springfield Oaks, and a $3 increase in White Lake Oaks. In the balance I got back, you're all supportive. Commissioner Quarles raised a very interesting question in terms of what are the other rates? Well, when we took over this, review, there were 350 different permutations in terms of SKU codes. 
working with Tom Hughes and Phil and Aaron, they have been reduced. 112 of those have been eliminated. There are still 242 possible rate combinations. And the average rate, when we consider the juniors, the leagues, everything, it's $18.08. And so while you may see these rates at a very high level, um, they cascade down into over 242 separate items. There's a relationship between the highest rate on a weekend where you get a 10% discount on a weekday. Seniors get further discounts from that. And Tom and Phil have been really great to work with in cascading the rate structure down so they can be entered into the um, SKU system. Well, one of the really tough issues we dealt with, and I know Tom and I have wrestled and debated and discussed, and we have slightly different viewpoints here. It's my experience based on 30 years of doing this and seeing over 6,000 golf courses, that municipal golf courses are like buoys in the lake and that the rates you set become what the other daily fee courses look at and they start adjusting their rates based on the relative experience of what they're providing versus what you're providing. The senior rates are being adjusted slightly this year, not as much as they could be based on the fair market value of the experience, but we're suggesting that they be bumped a little bit now in the spring, but revisit it coming in October where we would advocate that you recommend the rates for 2022 in October because what will happen, and I'm absolutely confident in this, is if you publicize your rates greatly, the, the daily fee golf courses and the other municipal courses are going to see how you're raising your rates and they're going to adjust their rates accordingly. Nobody wants to keep rates low. You're saying, Jim, do you have any examples of this where it worked? Well, the Alamo City Golf Trail was losing $10 million. They decided to spin it off into a nonprofit corporation independent of the city. The city granted them a $6 million loan that had to be paid and that they headed, uh, they actually brought a PGA pro named Jim Roshak down from Michigan to run the Alamo City Golf Trail, headed by Reed Thompson, who was the lawyer for USAA. They did exactly this, and it's exactly what happened the next year, is that the market adjusted the rates accordingly. And so while I will be long gone, we would really look and encourage you to publish your rates, not in March, because the daily fee courses don't have the opportunity to adjust, but to post them in the October time period. So what are the impact of the rates? You can see in blue on this slide where you were at historically at the bottom. And you can see that the rates are being bumped up, but there's still lots of golf courses that are ahead of you in terms of the fair market value. You were in the bottom quarter of the market and maybe now you're in the bottom third in terms of the rates. I talked about the season rates. And I, I should point out one other thing in terms of rates. Since 2000, while you still have 60 golf courses in Oakland County, 26 golf courses have closed in Oakland County in the last 20 years. The golf industry is, while you may say doing well, it's financially struggling in many respects that the COVID created a uh, respite for most of the courses across the country as green fees and revenue were up 13% last year. So we're looking at phasing in the senior rates over a two year period of time. You can see the rates in terms of the public rate and the senior cart rates um, going up. The suggested rates would be a, a little additional bump in Glen Oaks and um, Tom Hughes and I, he could put us in an MMA match or he put us in the middle of a <laughs> rig or hopefully we could just go shoot darts at a bar and have a few beers. Lion Oaks is, Really, 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 really special. It's a great golf course. It's not, it is a championship golf course and that the rate for a senior to be able to play for $40 with cart, um, I, I think it's too slow. And Tom believes that's the right rate. I think the rate's $58. So Tom and I flipped a coin and <laughs> with Dad and Sue as the, as the referees observing it, we settled on 45 for the year. Um, but it's, it's Lion Oaks is um, next time on Michigan, I'm going to buy a top of beer. And we're going to continue the discussion. It's just such a special course with high maintenance requirements. So here's the pros and cons of raising the rates. Would anybody like to discuss these before we go on? I see Mr. St uh, Stokes has raised his hand. Hi, I have a question just for clarification. 
are all of your comparisons um, parks that are subsidized by taxes or millages, or are they independent golf courses? They represent all of the golf courses that are open to the public, including um, municipal golf courses, um, uh, some by the Metro District, as well as most of them, Commissioner Stokes, are daily fee privately operated golf courses. Okay, because the only question that I had is when you raise rates, when there's uh, money coming from tax money, would could golfers say, well, you should raise rates for children to use the swings or whatever else is in the park? The key question there, and that's a very uh, astute observation, Commissioner Stokes, the key observation is swings and parks are not funded by private enterprise where you could close your golf courses and your citizens in the county would still have the opportunity to play. Golf is viewed as an enterprise fund and by most municipalities across the country, it should be self-sustaining without any support from millage, without any support from a general fund or without any allocation from the county. Oakland County, from the, the fact that this millage has just passed, was very sensitive and hasn't raised rates in the last couple of years. That's why these rates are a little, uh, a little more than modest to adjust for the historical. But I think that this is a great discussion in terms of where does the millage play into, into play. But I think you have to look at it is golf is considered an enterprise fund and should be self-sustaining. Does that answer your question, Commissioner? Yes, sir, it does. Uh, I just want to introduce this. You may come to it later. My other question is looking at the total revenue stream to the golf courses. In addition to golf, are you considering increasing the revenue stream by items other than golf but related? For example, um, sales of food, um, maybe sales of cigars, uh, I don't know if there's alcohol served, but other areas for revenue streams to uh, allow the rates to play golf to stay more or less modest, but yet to raise the revenue through other things, even banquets in winter or weddings, or if if COVID ever lets us get together yeah. for a wedding. I, that may be something you would come to later on, but it's something that I thought of to increase the revenue screen, stream without I increasing substantially the rates to play golf. Unfortunately, as you will learn over the next uh, couple of months uh, being on the commission, is that all of the banquet facilities are operated by a third party in which the county only receives a small rental uh, portion. Each one of those facilities and under themselves is already losing. I'm going to throw out a number of a million dollars each. I know it's one of the great concerns Sue Well has is the food and beverage operation because it's not part of and the city doesn't benefit significantly in the banquets or the weddings or any of the food and beverage activities. And as a matter of fact, the F&B activities, because they are concessioned out, and Glen Oaks, Commissioner, unfortunately, they don't come in until 9 o'clock in the morning. And so the golfer that's used to getting the cup of the coffee, the orange uh, juice, and a burrito doesn't have that opportunity because the concessionaire doesn't mm -hmm. open until 9 in the morning. The only incremental revenue activities are in carts or merchandise or range where you don't have the physical facilities to do the range. Your pro shops are limited in terms of size with the exception of Lion Oaks and even that's under scale compared to the quality of the government. And so the other revenue opportunities are limited. Are there any other, anybody else would like to discuss the rates? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Commissioner. Hearing none. I don't I don't see an additional hands. Thanks, Vicki. The other item is that we're giving discounts to seniors, to the military, the adaptive, and the veterans. Historically, the, they are also getting discounts for parts. So the thought is, is standardizing the rates. They're getting a double discount. And I teasingly say the cart doesn't know who's using it <laughs> in terms of the age. And so therefore, we're looking from a simplicity standpoint of the rate structure of establishing the rates for carts at $10 for $19 for nine holes, $16 for 18 holes. 
you will see carts range anywhere in Oakland County from $14 up to $20. We are on the lower end, but the $16 is certainly the competitive rate. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing none, I go to item number five. Tournaments, this is interesting. The county is actually discounting a tournament based on the number of people that come from the rack rate green fee. Most golf courses in the United States charge a premium because of the amount of labor that's required in staging it, scoring it, all of the pre-communication. So rather than receiving a discount, most courses across the country uh, charge a premium uh, for a tournament or an outing. They also package, and Commissioner Snooks, you would find this interesting, if you were operating your F&B, many actually tournaments are required to buy merchandise from the golf shop. The carts get set at a rate, and they're also required for a minimum buy out of the restaurant. But because of the organizational structure within the county where the, um, I'm gonna use Glen Oaks as an example, if a tournament comes to Glen Oaks and wants to have a banquet or outing, Doug can book it. He's got to say, you first got to talk to the um, concessionaire to see if they've got an available date. And then once they can confirm that, they come back and say, okay, we can now book the golf course. The lack of coordination is a sort of a challenge with what's going on. And so what we're advocating is, I know some of the staff's a little bit nervous about charging uh, a premium. And so the discussion was, let's just eliminate the discounts in 2021 and see what happens. And then let's become, if we don't get too much feedback, if we're not losing any tournaments, which I'm not expecting whatsoever, because finding courses that will be able to stage an event and block it and get everything arranged. Um, and then let's look at again in October to see maybe to, to adopt procedures consistent with other golf courses of charging a premium of up to $4 a golf course. Any discussions on this item? Hearing none, item six. <laughs> Top of the way, <laughs> over the beer, we're probably going to go have a steak dinner too. We ran all kinds of numbers. As a matter of fact, I have an article being published today to 12,500 daily fee owners across the country on this exact subject on terms of do you block the team <laughs> for two and a half hours in advance of the afternoon leagues? Well, leagues are a culture in the northern part, especially in Michigan. They comprise 25% of your play. But to run leagues, it increases the labor expense. Um, and the leagues, while they uh, generate 25% of your rounds, they only create 20% of your revenue. So you're in essence subsidizing the leagues a little bit. There's a, this article that I published today, you've got a golf course called Scott Lake. Uh, Jeff Hogue operates it. And what he actually does is he actually charges them a nine hole green fee is usually based on 60% of the 18 hole fee. For leagues, Jeff actually bases it on 70. 77% of the 18 whole fee. He charges a significant premium to leagues. So all we're looking to do at the discretion of the golf course under the direction of Tom and Jim is having the ability with your authority to charge a $2 premium per rate for blocking the first and 10th tee uh, for leagues. Any discussion on this item? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Nancy. I have a question. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, it's... Um... Is this for leagues, uh, regardless to if they're playing nine holes or 18 holes? Is there a difference? Uh, that's a very uh, good question. It's meant for the afternoon leagues. It starts somewhere between 4.30 and 5 o'clock at night. And only in the circumstances where we have to block for two and a half hours before those leagues start, we have to curtail 18 hole play. Because if we were to tee somebody off at 1.30, to play 18 holes by the time they got to the 10th tee, the leagues would be starting. And so we lose the revenue opportunity of selling 18 holes for two and a half hours. We can only sell nine holes of play to the general public. And Tom and I have run the numbers. And um, as my article um, supports, it's part of the culture, charging a small premium. Uh, it's probably a break even um, of charging the premium versus not allowing double but because it's part of the culture, it makes all the sense in the world to accommodate league play. Does that answer your question, Commissioner Charles? Yes, thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome. Item are, number seven. Are you now, and the staff in agreement on this? Um, 
they voted uh, such in the meeting. I think uh, in your packet, uh, Commissioner Vanderveen, I think it was 8-4. There is some disagreement amongst the staff, but we're leaving it at their discretion. It's important. They can't charge over that which the commission authorizes. So you're providing them the flexibility based on these leagues and rounds and where the T's are being uh, blocked giving them the authority to do that as a way of trying to achieve the objective. Your overriding objective is cash flow neutral. Okay. Thank you. Now here's an item to be debated uh, and delayed to 2020. <coughs> it is unimaginable, quite frankly, that employees that work at the golf course can't play at the golf course. If I owned the golf course, it would be a requirement that my director of golf play on a biweekly basis with the superintendent because the superintendent could be explaining the challenges he's having with getting bunkers um, that may have been washed out, sprinkler heads that have been broken, cart paths that are being broken down, where the pro could share with him his observations of what he's hearing in terms of the customer experience, and they could see it and they could live it together. So therefore, Every golf course allows full-time employees to play, but there's all kinds of issues with respect to the county. If you said, well, the employees of Oakland County could play golf courses for free, that doesn't work. You've got way too many employees that would be taking way too many times from the public, would have a negative impact on revenue. And so therefore, it should be only the employees in the golf division or that are working at a golf course have the opportunity to play at their golf course. If I worked at Lion Oaks, I could not play at Springfield Oaks. I can only play at the golf course in which I am working. It's a water park. Employees get to use the water park for free. So you can see that this is a very complicated issue that requires finance and human relations to go evaluate it. But this is a recommendation that employees should be able to play at the golf course. And so over the next year uh, through October, you're going to evaluate and see how this policy that is standard to the golf industry could be implemented. And it also then comes to the point of Oakland County struggles to hire part-time employees because they don't have the opportunity to play golf. And so most part-time employees can play one round for, in some cases, for every four hours work. We, in talking with Tom, we think maybe it's one round for every 20 hours may be the number. This is to be determined. Reservations are not permitted. It's on a walk-up basis only, but it's having an impact on the quality of labor you're able to hire um, and what you're paying in terms of wages. The county is at a great disadvantage by not allowing part-time workers, uh, employees that work at the golf course to be able to play the golf course. And it's my experience over the years is that when they do play and they see that trash on the ground, they pick it up. If the bunker's not raked, they take the time to rake it because they begin to have a personal pride over the golf course and the experience um, and making sure the carts are washed and making sure that the sand canisters are filled. They take a personal pride. And so this is something to be we're highly recommending for consideration and implementation in 2022. And what we're looking for you to do today is saying, this is an item to be researched for your further consideration on the question of volunteers and should they be able to play? And I'm gonna answer questions on your discussion on seven, eight, and nine here when I finish the volunteers. There's all kinds of issues with volunteers in terms of it comes with liability from injury, the hiring hours, can you find reliable volunteers? I know the staff is probably opposed to the idea of using volunteers at a golf course, but I also heard in this commission meeting that uh, Mr. Stencil's requested to be a volunteer. <laughs> so how do we work all of this out? All of this is we're trying to create in this review policies that are consistent with well-run golf courses. And so volunteers and the opportunity to play become the issue. Are there any discussions on items seven, eight, or nine? Mr. Vanderveen has his hand up. JJ, I have no uh, no reservations about the integrity of your proposition here, and and I have no problem with what you're recommending. Just for your information, uh, Oakland County has a long history in that very sensitive issue of free golf and abuse of free golf, but you've limited it to employees of a particular golf course and i think that puts it in an entirely different realm but uh, 
the, the sensitivity here, you touched on something that's been rattling around for years and years. We had we had to we had to really clean up our act, and we probably all bent over backwards on the conservative side. Well, thanks for that observation, because in essence, the golf course employees will be working there. The golf course is considered a, to the extent that it is not using any millage dollars and is truly self-sustaining, it makes sense to have the golfers working there because the millage clearly supports the rest of the parks where there's no significant revenue opportunities to break it even. And so the more that we move the golf to be self financially self-sustaining, the better the argument is to allow the employees at the golf course to play. Now, these next two items are procedural, and we're just bringing them before your consideration, is that currently your point of sale system, RecTrack, is being used as a cash register. The best golf courses are building databases. As a matter of fact, I'm on a plane next week to a course you've never heard of, the Tempest Golf Club. Uh, outside of Longview, Texas. They have a database of 25,000 golfers they market to. Well, you have 8,000 golfers' names. We don't know their zip codes. We don't know how often they come to the course. What do they spend? And so therefore, all the golf courses that are well run in the country have at the T-sheet, the names of the golfers entered into the T-sheet. And so I know it's Commissioner Vanderveen is playing on a Tuesday. He qualifies for the senior rate, and therefore I hit one button and it automatically calculates it, and the point of sale receipt comes out along with the payment of the credit card. It's how most golf courses run, not as a cash register, but as an integrated point of sale tee time reservation system. So we're advocating getting the golfers' names into the database to help you to market it in terms of their email addresses as well as their names into the system going forward. Are there any discussions on those two items in terms of improving the quality of your database and starting to build a database of your customers. Yeah, uh, this is Nancy. Yes, Commissioner. Um, is there any particular type of uh, database system or CIM or app that you would recommend that would uh, be the most effective for our our courses and especially if all of them can tie into that one system? Uh, the answer is yes. There's a bunch of them for uh, Club Caddy, which is down the street from you. Um, Lightspeed, uh, golfnow.com. But here's, here's the rub, Commissioner. If we just own these four and a half golf courses ourselves, we would not be using Rec Track. But Rec Track is the leading software system for counties and parks across the country of which golf is one module. So if we take out golf and run it through its own software system, we lose the household data of the person that's bought the park pass. And so we're using a system that is not ideal. It is not optimum, but it does have the capability to record the names of the golfers and build a database. It's, it's re reporting is not as robust as we'd like to see it. And so on a scale of 100, you know, um, I give it a 72. But there are other systems out there that would get a score from 90 to 98. But the problem being, if we bring in those systems, we compromise the entire park's reporting. And so we sort of got to live with the devil that's brought us. <laughs> okay. Moving on, there was a question about loyalty. Doug Amon, um, very talented pro at Glen Oaks, it introduced a player card. $50, uh, they get a $5. So they're paying us $50 in advance. They get $5 off the round, meaning all they've done, and they get the 10th round free. This represents an about 11% discount, would be 13% greater rounds. But it's until we get a database and can implement a formal loyalty system based on spending on points, it's a very good interim step to continue. And so we're just looking to make you aware of this to get your permission to go forward. Is there any discussion about this? Uh, program. Hearing none, I'll go into item number 14. You don't offer season passes, don't. <laughs> Your golfers would love to have a season pass for $1,500 to $2,000 where they're going to come and play 100 rounds at $15 a round. 
The courses that got crushed in 2020 were those that were offering season passes because of with COVID and the ability to go outdoors, season passes are a bad idea. And so I see that three abstained and I'd be glad to have a conversation. Golfers love season passes. You're saying, Jim, are you against all season passes? No, I'd say a season pass would be appropriate if it was priced at $4,000 for unlimited play. But I'm absolutely confident if I brought that forward to you, we would not get a $4,000 for unlimited golf at the golf courses. And so it would be priced based on per political pressure at a rate that would be below financially self-sustaining for the golf course. Because what happens is these people that start playing 80, 90, and 100 rounds, they become territorial. They believe it's their private club. And so they become not welcoming of the other public golfers. And frankly, the staff, when they see people abusing these things, they don't give them a level of customer service. They don't have season passes. I know some think it's a good idea. Bad idea. Is anyone want to discuss season passes? I'll mention that after he's done here. All right. Thanks. Mr. McGilvery, you're not muted. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm saving that. I'm saving that if employees were allowing them to play golf was subject to um, debate, this one is absolutely subject to debate. And while the commissioners voted 7 2 to approve raising the senior age for golf rates from 62 to 65, you can see I presented the pros and cons on both sides. You will find the senior age at competitive courses at 55, 60, 62, 64, 65, 66. This will, if we were to raise the age from 62 to 65, it's going to negatively impact 5.1% of the customers fall within that age group that are using your courses. But the larger issue is all of your senior rates in Oakland County for everything else are at 62. So you're creating an exception for the golf courses, raising the age that's inconsistent with the county policy for everything else. And I'm an accountant, I'm a CPA, and there's nothing I like than simplicity and a simplified rate structure. However, the reason why it makes economic sense is in the survey, your average golfer is at 58.2 years of age. Most of your plaques come from people that are seniors, and we're giving them a discount in that uh, in the 62 to the 65 age. 18.5 percent of your golfers are over the age, so we're literally not impacting 18 percent of your golfers. And yes, we're going to ding five percent of your golfers, but the seniors, their average median household income in the survey was ninety-eight thousand dollars. And I know that they're going to complain. I heard there were no public comments on the call today, well, there will be public comments next month. <laughs> they're going to complain they're living on Social Security. They can't afford it, that they don't have kids in school. Their property taxes are paying for schools that they're getting no benefit from. You owe me, is what they're going to tell you. You owe me. This is, ex this is all my 25 years of experience in doing these workshops in front of city councils and commissions like this and what I hear when the citizens start talking. But let's think about this. If we just were to, they're going to play, if we increase those rates and impact 5% of the customers, and if we're increasing that rate effectively $4, they're going to play 20 times. We're going to cost these individual $80 for 90 hours of free recreation. So less than a dollar an hour is we're impacting the people. Let's discuss this. What do you want to do on age 62 to 65? We think 65 is the rate age is what courses are moving to across the country based on the aging of the population. I'm sure there's discussion here. Hearing none, then we know. <laughs> correct. Nope, nope. Moving on to 60. What you heard me say, Commissioner Parks, there were 356. Uh, rates. You were concerned about no junior rates at Lion Oaks. Tom's got those incorporated. And what we're doing is simplifying the SKU system. I could show you what we had to do. Tom and Phil were just, uh, Phil was absolutely amazing. Jeff was amazing in finance for the county in reconstructing your records because you don't have financial statements that show you easily 
and consolidates all your courses into meaningful reporting. It's a challenge. I've never in my career seen a system where staff gets allocated to five different departments in terms of labor or expenses like gas pumps. How do you allocate where you have a central gas pump allocated to golf versus a park versus a water park? the whole accounting here. So we want to simplify golf. So if nothing else, if we're using the same SKU for an 18 hole at Green Oaks, Lion Oaks, Springfield Oaks, and Red Oaks, so we can consolidate the data and come back to you in October with meaningful in financial information in terms of our revenue and what where we're making money and where we're not making enough. I presume that there's no debate about this. It's It's simplifying the accounting and Tom, and Phil, to their credit, have already created a whole new SKU structure, reducing it to 242 from 356. They're both to be congratulated. Lastly, talk about um, um, policies that are inconsistent with county policy currently. When I play golf, if there's a bag valet and he takes the bags out of my car, I hand him a couple of bucks. If they clean my clubs, when I finish the round, I hand them five bucks. There's no tipping allowed at the county courses. And so you're at a competitive disadvantage. If I go pay Shepherd Hollow, I've just peeled five to ten dollars to support that staff, whether it's a part-time employee or a volunteer. So allowing volunteers by allowing the hiring of volunteers, which is a 2022 policy, if it and also allowing them to be tipped will, where I play at the Regimental Pines, they're high school students. What a great way to get a summer job and help them with their values and getting them some money because they're volunteering and, and they're tipping. There's a big jar and they just take the jar at the end of the night and divide it by the people that work the shift. Well, this has got some consideration with HR and the fiscal department that needs to be consulted. They've rejected tipping policies in the future so we're looking for the commission's approval to take this under advisement and study it going forward. Comments on this? Hearing none, we'll get to the last item. And you've been so helpful in getting through this, hopefully efficiently. Lastly, Red Oaks is losing a quarter of a million dollars. Historically, it's gonna lose a quarter of a million dollars future. So all we're looking to do is study Red Oaks, have somebody study Red Oaks. I know. Mr. McGoffrey has an idea of there's 12 towns involved with that smokestack. If they could cooperate to take that down, a range could be built, a short game area. It would encourage the youth and seniors to embrace it, to learn the game. That's one really good use of the property. Your water park doesn't have enough parking. If we were to retransition Red Oaks and create the parking space into an activity that generates more revenue, water parks, that might be a good idea also. So we're looking for the commission approval on each of the, uh, of doing a study on Ray Oaks, because as is, it's gonna to continue to lose money ad infinitum. And it's unfortunate if you're looking to break even and the other courses are generating cash flow, but you still come up with a negative number because of Red Oaks, I think we need to address what the issue is and it's at Red Oaks. So I've now finished presenting all 18 items. And so my suggestion, uh, Commissioner McBill Ray and Vicki, are these approved in mass based on the implementation and the time schedule? Does anybody want to address any of the items or can we consider these 18 items, taking them under advisement for the timetable as to be further studied or to be adopted in 2021? Vicki, how would you like to handle this? Um, I would defer to Mr. McGilvery, but um, I'm, I'm guessing they probably want to ponder all the information that you've provided, Mr. McGilvery. Yeah, I guess I would say we would like to take it under advisement at this point. And I know that we're trying to set rates early, open our golf courses a little bit earlier and consistently. So um, I think we'll look at everything and uh, get a report and recommendation back from staff, uh, from the administration of parks, and we'll go from that point. Uh, let me I'll just take the devil's advocate on that, if I may. You open your golf courses in 30 days. Your next meeting is not to the beginning of April. And so logistically, the ability to take this under advisement and then say, okay, the reconfiguration of the point of sale systems, of putting in the new rate structure, you're going to create a load on the staff where inefficiency is going to occur. 
And it's unfortunately, this is being delivered in March, where ideally it should have been delivered in October or November. And so if with your permission, I would suggest those items um, because we're deferring many items to 2022 that, and because the rates are cascading down, we've developed the consensus with the staff, Dan, Sue, I, and Tom, and Phil have been working on this, that we look at this and say, we're good with the concept of this program, and that we'll look at the other items for 2022 later, but I think the staff needs to start working tomorrow to ensure a successful open in 2021. Um, and they've already got this already lined out with the staff support. Okay, JJ, I don't know. Go ahead. Can you hear me, Gary? Go ahead, Chris. Okay, good. I didn't know my internet's working now. Um, I was just going to say the same thing that JJ said. It, um, you know, we hired them to come up with some recommendations, and I think the timeline is just. Um, we don't have time to like consider it and stuff. And I think that if some um, item was uh, implemented that we really didn't like this year, we could always go back and change it. But uh, I agree, um, you know, like today already feels almost like spring when it's 39 degrees. So I think the time factor, you know, we got in it late, we knew we were late, but I think we got to move on it because I just don't think the staff have enough time to implement all these changes. So I, I just was going to say the same thing before he spoke that way. So, thanks, Commissioner. Well, Commissioner, come on, go over it. Let me leave it at this: in every consultant review that's been done over the past ten years, the staff takes these recommendations and they're and many of them don't get implemented based on their own direction. <laughs> and so, all we're doing is outlining suggestions to uh, frame the maximum that can be charged and the policies to be implemented because I'm sure the staff is going to tweak these a little bit um, with Dan and Sue and Phil and Jim and Tom, um, but I think they need to act on it. So with, if, if it's okay with you, I would just, if there's no objections, I'd love to see uh, the commission say, team, you've got a game plan. Let's, let's start executing it as you deem appropriate and fit. How does that sound? Uh, Mr. Chair, this is Nan Tava question. Yeah, I do too. Um, yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The uh, the rates, I, I have no problem with that, I, and um, especially in in light of the fact that we're trying to uh, not trying, but we want to open our golf courses uh, as soon as possible. But my my question is back to uh, item eighteen, um, the the study that you want to be suggesting here. Uh, I think that's going to take some time, um, unless I read it incorrectly, and and to look at the best way to um, to move forward with Red Oak Golf Course. Um, I don't know if we can do it as quickly as uh, some of the other items. So number eighteen is probably the only one I would question if we should uh, move forward with it. Uh, at this time, but uh, certainly. Uh, Sorry, Commissioner, the path, a path of a thousand miles begins with a single step, as Leo say, said one time. All we're looking to do is commence, not end the study in 2021, just commence the review on this um, as a way of, I wouldn't expect the answer would be um, derived until 2022 or 2023. All we want to do is commence the beginning of a study at Red Oaks because of the uh, losses that are going to be sustained out infinitum unless something is done. Yeah, I, I certainly understand the loss. Um, and I can't remember your chart. If, if it was, was it Red Oak that you did, we did not do a price increase on? No, we, no price increase at Red Oaks. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, again, uh, item 18 is only one I would question. Thank you, okay. Mr. Chair. Uh, Dave, you had a question. Uh, well, I, I was going to speak partly to what Nancy just did. Um, I, I'm ready. I'm ready to go ahead. But I think if that item 18 and any other items here that staff would have particular heart heartburn with, that they could get back with us. But I'm ready to move now. Yeah. Jim, any thoughts? 
Dan? What's that? Any thoughts on what we should do here? No, I think uh, uh, we should uh, take some action. And uh, I appreciate the fact that the commission is uh, considering implementing this over uh, two years. And uh, go for it. You know, Mr. Right Gary, I think that, Gary, this is Chris. I think we could do a vote and see if it passed. I think we have to vote on it, don't we? Just to see yeah. where everyone stands or something. I mean, if anyone has... I mean, if someone's that against implement starting implementation, they could vote no. I'm, I'm thinking it's still going to pass. I'm just really worried about um, the time factor. Um, I don't want to hold up all and stress out the staff um, trying to get open with all these new changes and stuff. So I, I would like to move forward with it. But Commissioner Mr. McGillivray? Yeah. Who else wanted to speak? Oh, hey, who so else wanted to speak to that? Uh, just commissioners uh, wanted you to know that uh, staff and I have a meeting scheduled for Monday uh, on golf course implementation with these items to maybe fine tune specifics and assignments. A lot of the items have already been started. For example, um, online reservations um, and a lot of these have already occurred. But I think the biggest thing that we need to address are the fees, are the very most time sensitive ones for right now. Um, and we can bring back that implementation plan to the next meeting. Okay, um, first of all, let me just say, I appreciate JJ's entire look into our golf courses. It was tough to tell a taxpayer that we're losing the kind of money we are in golf courses. So I'm all in favor of making changes where we can correct that. Uh, on our agenda, on, under item D3, is the proposed golf course fees, which we'll be voting on today. So maybe I would suggest that we, someone make a motion to accept the report and work toward that as a final goal and get a report back from the administration by way of Sue uh, next, uh, next meeting, as far as all the other things in there. Um, I, I think it's important that we move forward before the golf season opens. Um, is there anyone that would like to make a motion? I'll move. Moved by Vanderveen, is there a support? Support. Right. Yeah. Support by Charles. Any discussion on the motion? Yeah, um, Mr. Chair, I, I'm not uh, uh, clear. You said that we have moved forward on all 18 items. Yes. Right now, I, I truly believe that we do need to uh, move forward with our, our rates and uh, some of the other items in here. Um, I don't want to uh, vote against this, but I would have a hard time voting for item 18. Um, what about 18 is bothering you, Nancy? I, I don't understand. Um, as, as I said earlier, the, the, the study, um, I think it's going to take um, some time to really dig uh, into it to truly understand Red Oaks. Um, I think most people who have served on this uh, commission with me know uh, I truly think Red Oaks should stay around. I would like to uh, make sure that whatever uh, we're looking at, we're not doing it in haste and that we're looking at all the options. I don't see how as it reads here to be implemented in 2021, how I do the study, begin the study, take the action, and then uh, implement it in 2020. Well, Unless I'm um, reading that incorrectly. Well, I, I, that's what I'm wondering. I, the reason, that's the reason I ask is on, on agenda item 18 that he's got on the screen, all we're asking for is that Red Oaks, you know, we've discussed under 
sustainability of keeping the golf course open um, or closing it because it's losing such a large amount of money. We have some alternatives possibly, which would be to try to get additional property to be able to put a driving range in, uh, things like that. So let's, uh, the, all we're voting on today is that we agree with the statement that we need to, we need to do something to enhance Red Oaks. I don't think we're talking about closing it at this point. No, I, I, again, uh, as, as item 18 reads, it reads uh, that they're going to do this study, it's going to be completed, and they're going to implement it in 2021. And that's my question. Am I uh, uh, looking at that incorrectly? Because I don't think you can do a fair assessment of everything Red Oak needs in, in implemented in 2021. The date has changed to 2023. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay. 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 Chris, go ahead. That's go ahead, just what Chris. I was gonna say. That that is this what I was gonna say. I don't know. We might have um some some kind of connection here. JJ was gonna say change the date because I I understand where Commissioner Quarles is coming from. Um, you know, it's the same thing with the Waterford Water Park wanting to close its stuff. It's it's a big decision to close something in it. I I understand and she, I know she like personally like loves this golf course. And um, you know, I think that it's like when she votes on it, it's like saying she wants to close it. So I get where Nancy's coming from. Um, and I think the extra two years or whatever, one year that you put will help that. But I I agree it needs to take some time and a comprehensive study. I just don't want to start closing stuff with not a lot of thought and consideration either. So I know where Nancy's coming from. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts? Lance. I have a question. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to understand. Is she concerned about closing an incinerator? Is that the concern on item no, agenda no. 18? No, right now the Red Oaks golf course is a nine hole golf course. We're losing a lot of money on that course in particular. Right behind it sits um, a, a large incinerator that's been closed for several years. And we would like the option of being able to talk to the association that owns it, since it is closed, and uh, maybe buy up that property, turn it into a driving range and some kind of a training facility, potentially. Um, that's what we've talked about. So. That's what we're. But, yeah, thank you more to the point, point Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, that incinerator is not Oakland County's property. So, quite frankly, I, I don't know why it's in here. But my, my concern is, oh, Red Oaks have had some issues over the years, um, financial issues in particular, and that I think it is a, a a golf course or facility that could be profitable. But I don't. As the original uh, item 18 read, uh, I don't think you could uh, implement a study, uh, take action on it, and then uh, uh, put in place whatever um, findings you come up with it within 2021. Uh, 2023, okay, that's good. Uh, and if it takes less time than 2023, that's I will feel more comfortable that we have done a thorough analysis and assess what the needs of our uh, red oaks if i can just add it says 2023 now but i think it would take even longer sakura who owns the incinerator uh is owned by 12 different communities and trying to get 12 communities to agree to do something might be tough to do so i think it might be even farther out than 2023 so Okay. Uh, Tom. Go ahead, um, Tom. Thank you. Um, just one comment um, of the 18 items here that are being proposed. Uh, 11 of them are either within the fees and charges we will bring up later for approval or already have been implemented, such as the online reservations, um, this cleaning up of SKU. So a lot of the things have been done already. The ones on the um, agenda items that are being approved or requested to be approved um, that can't be done uh, immediately would be like the volunteers, the employees, 
uh, being able to play free golf, part time and full time, as well as tips. So um, yeah. those items there, there's uh, five of them that we kind of out of our hands. But the rest of them are either being addressed within fees and charges or are taking place. Okay, hey, thanks, thanks uh, Tim. Um, Vicki, do we have a motion? We do, don't we? Yes, we do. Um, I'll read it back. Um, a motion to accept the report and move, uh, work toward, uh, as a final goal, to report back to the commission at the next meeting. And it was moved by Vanderveen and supported by Charles. Is there any further questions on the motion? Hearing none, can we take a roll call vote, please? Sure. On the golf course issue, uh, Commissioner Herzog. Yes. LaFontaine? Yes. Long? Chris Long? Can you hear me, Chris? Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Your vote is yes? I'll, I'll take it as a yes. Uh, McGilvery? Yes. Nash? Okay, I think we lost Mr. Nash. Commissioner Quarles? Yes. Stokes? Yes. Vanderveen? Yes. Bagley? Bagley? Commissioner Bagley, your vote? she's muted um her microphone shows green are you still there commissioner bagley okay she may be having difficulties commissioner charles yeah um commissioner and uh, bagley. commissioner bagley just just texted in she's a yes so we have a nine to zero vote chairman thank you commissioner bagley Mr. Bagley's audio is not working. She's going to log back in. I only have a few more slides. Thank you for your consideration of that. But in doing this review, I wanted to bring a subject for your uh, review and attention and evaluation over a period of time is that I think there's confusion regarding self-managed, bringing in a third-party management company or leasing the golf course. In the past, you've tried to lease the golf course and that is not viable in any attempt to lease the golf course would not result uh, in finding suitable vendors to come in because of the deferred capital expenditures. But in our review, this is an issue that I think is affecting the county, not only in golf, but across the entire county. The benefits that are paid to the full-time workers are at 69.23%. If you had a third party management company, they would be paying the staff at a 26% fringe benefits percentage. What you're paying versus what a third party management company uh, would charge is that you're spending annually $235,000 excessively in fringe benefits over other competitive golf courses. The rule of thumb is if fringe benefits get over 40%, the golf courses cannot be economically self-sustaining. And I know it's your goal, 40, um, four and nine of you want to be self-sustaining, five of nine want to be positive cash flow. I would be delinquent if I didn't say your fringe benefits that you're paying them are a significant issue. And that if we apply that fringe benefit percent percentage in looking at the total salaries that are paid across from Glen Oaks to Lion Oaks. Glen Oaks is overstaffed, Lion Oaks is understaffed. Lion Oaks should be somewhere between $650,000 and $725,000 based on the quality of the costs, the Fragmites that are out there, all of the excess of work that Sean has to do to maintain that golf course at a $72 price point. And so I just wanted to point out to you, if we looked at there's a rule of thumb that your fringe benefit should be between 48 and 58%. And so even if I use your 2020 numbers, you're at 63% salary in relationship to gross revenue. That's not economically self-sustainable. And so 
I know what your goal is, but as long as the fringe benefits remain high, and so I just wanted to share with you is that you're going through lots of transition. Uh, Dan is unfortunately leaving, and so do you take the north and south and consolidate them? Do you start allocating just golf to one uh, chief and parks to another? You've got lots of decisions ahead of you, but the pros and cons of a third-party management is that if I use one company, Kemper, that has 40 municipal golf courses for men or 150. So this is something for you to consider because if you're truly committed for the golf courses to be self-sustaining, it's going to be necessary. So my final thoughts uh, is that even if these recommendations are implemented fully, and I don't expect them to be, your financial goals of breaking even in 2021 uh, are, uh, it's going to be touch and go, depending on the volume of rounds. And then I think you're going to continue to lose out of the general fund upwards of a half a million dollars of um, net income after you consider interest depreciation. And a meaningful analysis of the golf course operation is at best extremely difficult, and at worst, it's impossible. Uh, I'm a CPA, and Bill and Tom and Jim and Dan and Sue have been so good, and Jeff, in, in literally dropping numbers into an Excel sheet that we then put into pivot tables to try to reconstruct your records. There are no meaningful records to tell you how you're doing on your golf courses. We have no clues to the exact expenditures for the administration, golf shop, and maintenance as they should be done. And there's no one individual that's responsible for the golf courses. And without somebody being accountable, I don't know how you help hold the golf division to be accountable. With that having been said, I hope I haven't overstayed my welcome. This has absolutely been a pleasure to do. Uh, the staff in, has been great to work with. Are there any final questions that I can answer for you today? Dave? Mr. Uh, I, I, would, I would make an overall statement, if I may. Um, JJ, uh, you have given us everything we asked you to do, and uh, you, you've done it on time and, and at a very fair price. I want to commend you and congratulate you for it. For the work you put into this and you brought an enormous amount of energy uh, tremendous <laughs> I, I, I thank you for that i've got a couple of questions mr chair Go ahead. Uh, uh, jj from a um, i'll say a facility and a customer service standpoint uh customer service being friendly uh did you have a chance to observe that or Get any uh, ideas about it, or can you opine, opine on it? Unfortunately, I can't. And, and one of the limitations of this study, Commissioner, was that this was done when the golf courses were closed. What we usually do during a review is that we not only come secretly and play the golf courses to get a firsthand personal experience of your golf courses, but I also play all the courses in the competitive sets. Like I would have played Shepherd's Hollow or Links of Novi so that when I'm talking with Tom about what's a fair rate, I would have the background information of what they're pro providing for their price versus what you're providing. So unfortunately, I can't comment on the customer service. I can comment on, in my career, we've never had a workshop where we brought everybody from five courses into one room, do a business presentation, and then look at these 18 items and vote on the 18 items. Um, the, the cooperation of the staff was great. So I'm encouraged that that cooperation that I saw gets carried out into the field in terms of the part-time staff that the customer experiences. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. One other question, Mr. Chair. Um, JJ, I couldn't agree with you more that we need to have a single golf leader in the organization and to look at it from a business standpoint. I, but I don't see that that would be your job to to reorganize our department but i would ask the staff to give real hard thought to that i think we need to move forward with that right now right that's all okay uh, i have a i have a question mr chair nancy i apologize my hand my raised hand uh icon is not working uh, okay thank you uh, I found the comment about the um, friends benefits to be uh, quite interesting. And 
I'm wondering, the people that work at our golf course, are they part-time? Most of them? The majority and, are. Okay, and are they getting the 69%? Uh, no, they're not. They're getting 7.9%. So your effective wage is around 35% fringe benefit percentage when you put in the full and the part-time workers. But the um, most of the Northern courses, whether it be Oakland County, Detroit, Minnesota, uh, Min Minneapolis, St. Paul, both of which we've done studies, uh, this is an issue that the full-time staff gets reduced to one or two at each of the facilities, um, but it still becomes a, uh, the fringe benefits in those situations run between 35 and 45 percent. The 69 percent in my entire career is the highest I've seen. The second highest was in Albuquerque, Mexico, and they're at 55 percent. And what they've done is they literally contracted out to lessees to run each of the individual of the five golf courses a way of mitigating the fringe benefit at 55 percent in Albuquerque. Um, if you go to San Antonio on the Alamo City Golf Trail, they're at 26%. Uh, Indigo Partners, Billy Casper, they pay their staff, the full-time employees, at a 25% uh, fringe benefit level. So you're at 69 for your full-time employees. This deals with pensions and medical benefits. I think this is an issue we're going to study for all of Oakland County because it's frankly probably not sustainable at that level. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I, I too would like to echo Dave's comments. JJ, you've done a terrific job. We are hopeful that we can turn things around here in Oakland County. And with all of your help that you've provided, I think we can or will at least work toward that. So thanks for all your uh, all your work on this hard on this difficult subject. It was absolutely my pleasure. I cannot say what a pleasure it was to work with Phil and Tom and Dan and Sue. Jim and Aaron, uh, all the people I came in contact with are absolutely professional. It was a delight. I'm going to stay on this and listen to the other items, but I'm going to mute myself right now in the video. Okay? Okay, very good. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. We'll move on with the agenda. Uh, let me just say I apologize for it being a long agenda, but we've got a little ways to go yet. So um, next item is uh, item 11B. Uh, proposal, proposed rules and regulations. Uh, who is that, Dan or Sue? Who's handling uh, it? Actually, uh, it's Jim. Jim, this is Jim Delegate, uh, Chief of Parks of the North District. And uh, as usual, we bring the uh, park rules to the commission annually. Uh, we have met with our staff and the Corporation Council. And as you can see, we made uh, a few different uh, suggestions in the rules and making some changes and we'd like to uh hopefully had a chance to review those and we'd like to make those changes and then get them out to the uh county board if, if that sounds good is there is there a motion motion by herzog supported by quarrels is there any discussion on the motion any questions Hearing none, can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, Commissioner LaFontaine? Yes. Long? <laughs> Commissioner Long? Can we restate the, the item just for in case anyone's audio went out? I'm sorry? Restate the, the motion? Restate. Yes. Oh, the motion was move to adopt the attached resolution on the proposed 2021 revisions to the Oakland County Parks and Recreation General Information Rules and Regulations and forward it to the Oakland County Board of Commissioners for final approval. Okay, continuing on, Commissioner Long. Uh, Commissioner McGilfrey. Yes. Nash. Corals? Yes. Stokes? Yes. Vanderveen? Yes. Eggly? Yes. Charles? Yes. Oh, sorry. And, and Herzog? Yeah. 
Yes. Okay, I have eight. Um, Commissioner Long, are you out there? Nope, I have eight to zero in favor of it, Mr. McGillivray. All right, thank you. Uh, next item is recommendation from the Oakland County Parks and Recreation, uh, Oakland County Board of Commissioners Committee on a request from food and beverage vendors for waivers of debt. Um, it's Bill. Bill, go ahead. So good afternoon, commissioners. We have met uh, myself, Dan Stencil, Sue Wells, met with Commissioner McGilvery and Chairman Woodward uh, a couple times to discuss the outstanding debt from Oak Management, uh, who manages Addison Oaks and Glen Oaks Conference Centers. Um, as you recall, uh, we got a request from them last year about this time due to COVID and them having to shut down operations. They were requesting uh, forgiveness of all of their payments for 2020. Um, we have not yet negotiated with them on that. We've taken their request. We have not received payment yet. Um, the debt has built up to a point where we need to come to a resolution. Um, as of this week, we, we have not presented this to Oak Management yet, but we will be doing that with consensus of the board. Um, they currently are past due um, as of January 1st, about 68,000 in utilities. And their fixed fees and equipment fees for the fiscal year 2020 is $147,518. So with that outstanding debt, the, the offer will be to have them pay their past due utilities, including January through March of this year by May 1st. That's gonna be approximately $88,000. They would then pay all their future quarterly utilities within 30 days of invoice. They would pay their 50% of their balance on the flat fee and equipment fee. Um, so they owe 147,518. 50% of that would be 73,759. We would set up a quarterly payment plan with them to go two years starting in October um, to get them through this year. Um, if all of those occur, then we would waive the remaining 50% of what they owe on their fixed fees if they stay caught up on all their other fees. So that in general is what we're going to be offering. Um, once we get to a, a full amendment for their contract, that will come back to this board for official approval. And then it would go to the Board of Commissioners for their approval. Okay, any questions, thoughts? Hey, I have a question. Yeah. Um, this, my question is simply um, the deferment of payments. Is, is all of that interest free or are they expected to pay interest on that? No, that would all be interest free. Thank you. Um, my only comment would be is that uh, Oak Management has um, had a rough year with COVID. They haven't been able to have any events, so they've definitely lost some money. Uh, we think it's important that they pay the utilities because we have a contract that says that they are going to do that. Um, so uh, I I'm very much in favor of this so that we can move on rather than let it linger for months and months and months. So Nancy, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think you touched on part of my question. Um, if I'm remembering this correctly, did, did we enter into an agreement with, with them last year? Um, I, I kind of remember having uh, this. This was in front of the board as a as a as just a communication from them, and then we set up um, a kind of a subcommittee to actually work out what the the outcome would be as far as payment plans or forgiveness that type of thing okay did did they meet uh any of the obligations from that um that plan we just negotiated we actually haven't presented them them with this plan they'll be getting that this week so um i anticipate some feedback from them um 
So we will kind of make our next decisions based on that feedback. Okay, I apologize. I was uh, speaking of uh, the last time we met with them. Uh, if we uh, actually came up with a plan in which they were to make certain payments and it sounds like we did not. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Dan, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, just wanted for the two uh, newest uh, commission members is that Oak Management has been with Oakland County Parks since uh, 1974 providing food and beverage services uh, at uh, the parks. And, uh, you know, we've had a pretty good relationship with them historically. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts? Hearing none, we have a motion. Can we have a roll call vote on the motion, please? Yes. Commissioner Long. Commissioner McGilvery. Yes. Nash. Quarles. Yes. Stokes. Yes. Vanderveen. Yep. I'm sorry, Mr. Vanderveen, you're muted. Vanderveen is a yes. Oh, okay. Bagley. Yes. Charles. Yes. Herzog? Yes. And LaFontaine? Yes. That's eight in favor of it, Chairman McGilvery. Thank you, Vicki. Um, next item on the agenda, under D, it's uh, Oakland County Parks fees and charges. <coughs> um, number one is a proposed Holly Oaks or V Park fees and charges. Do we have a motion? Hey, hey, Gary, it's Joe Dolly. Oh, go ahead. Uh, motion by Herzog. Is there a support? Supported by Quarles. Okay. Jim? Oh, I'm back. Okay. So, what we're looking at is actually keeping the $15 fee um, for people that purchase their pass or ticket online but actually charging $5 more if they pay on site. And what this does is it helps us a lot in reducing the need for staff, uh, reduces the need for $5 bill. So it'll really push people to do the online um, ticket buying. And it, it's just amazing how well that worked and how fast we can get people into the park. And uh, so we're just, we'd like to recommend that we increase the on-site fee to $20. Okay. Um, I guess uh, I, I just have one comment. In the, the yeah. two events that I've been out there at the ORV part, I had a conversation with a couple people, and they said they wouldn't have any problem paying $30 a vehicle to come in. So please keep that in mind for the future. I mean, I know that we're new and we're starting out, so I'm fine with this, but I think we need to look at uh, looking at increasing that as well so that we don't get into a situation where it's costing us money to operate that so. any other questions questions or thoughts hearing none can we have a roll call vote on the motion please yes commissioner mcgillivray yes yes Quarles. yes Stokes. yes Vanderveen? Yes. Bagley? Yes. Charles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. LaFontaine? Yes. And Long? It passes eight to zero, Chairman. Thank you. The next item we have is proposed uh, recreation programs and services. Um, I guess that's Brandy. Are you here, Brandy? I am. Good afternoon. Okay. The fees in front of you are for the archery range, and they are um, 
over the last couple of years, we've expanded um, our archery offerings. And now we're at the point where um, we feel that we can safely operate and do rentals out at the archery range. So these are just um, some fees to catch up with um, our other programming and other rates that we have at the range. Are there any questions at all? Um, hearing none, can we have a roll call vote on the motion, please? I need a motion, sir. I'm sorry. Moved by Quarles, supported by Herzog. Okay. Um, starting with the archery range, vote um, Nash. Quarles. Yes. Stokes? Yes. Vanderveen? Yes. Bagley? Yes. Charles? Yes. Rizog? Yes. LaFontaine? Yes. Long? And McGilvery? Yes. Motion passes eight to zero. Motion is passed. The next item is proposed golf course fees. Tom? Um, I believe it's on page 129 in the commission book is the uh, proposed fees we submitted. Um, as of yesterday, we made a couple modifications to that. And I believe Phil will be pulling it up on the screen uh, for the uh, proposed changes. And that was for the uh, senior adaptive military veteran rates. Uh, those are the ones we had discussed uh, phasing in over time versus at one time uh, because of the uh, the large increase and in, uh, being sensitive to the uh, user group and uh, maintaining our senior population for golf and uh, for juniors. Um, so that's the recommendation for the change that was in the commission packet for the um, for the rates. Everything else is uh, as proposed by JJ. We're all in agreement that the rates that were discussed and proposed for everything else is necessary and uh, in right on target. So we're excited to move forward with those proposed rates. Okay, we need a motion. I, I have a question, Gary, if I may. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Tom, I assume and I, I guess I, I see it here, but I didn't read it carefully. Uh, these are the cart charges are in concert with JJ's recommendations. The carts, yes, there'll be 16 for 18 holes and 10 for nine. You know, that's the only uh, cart rates we will have Thank for you. all the courses. Thank you. Yep. Is there a support to the motion? I'm sorry, Mr. McGilvery, who moved? Uh, Herzog. Okay. Supported by Quarles. Just a question of clarification. Are we voting on the yellow staff suggested proposal? Is that what we're voting on? Uh, yes. Okay. okay, is there any other questions? Yes, I do have a question. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Yolanda. So if I recall correctly, the recommendation from JJ was the Keegan firm was that we would change our pricing in October. Is this in contrast with that? Did I, you know, fill me in if I'm missing something. Yes, so normally our, our, our process for approving fees is in November. Um, this year we delayed the process in order to have this consultant uh, review our fees and make recommendations. So this March approval is not uh, not common. So we, uh, it is a normally a, a November approval for all our fees. I guess my follow up to that then is just: uh, Are we doing this towards the recommendation to which we voted on in the packet of 18 that said that we would announce our fees increase in the fall? because then it would give an unfair advantage to the, the corporate courses to do something different? Am I, am I connecting two different proposals? So these proposals are 
um, we propose to be implemented immediately. So when we upload in the course April 1, there will be rates will be providing. And then the ones that are being delayed or spread out over a couple of years will be reviewed and implemented going into the fall for approval to be implemented next year. That answer your questions? I think so. It was a little hard to hear, <laughs> but we'll proceed. It's my, I, I believe that we normally do this in November, but because of the consultant, we put it off. Um, so probably coming up this year, we'll have it in October, November. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Don't see any? Can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, Commissioner Quarles. Yes. Stokes? Yes. Vanderveen? Yes. Begley? Yes. Charles? Herzog? Yes. LaFontaine? Yes. Long? McGilvery? Yes. And Nash? Motion passes eight to zero, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next item is item E, proposed 2021 uh, prescribed burn program and budget amendment. Sarah? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great, so this proposal is to increase funding for our annual prescribed burning program. As many of you know, due to budget constraints in 2020 um, and the statewide shutdown, we weren't able to complete any prescribed burning in spring 2020. We were able to complete a few fall burns last year, but that was part of our 2021 budget. So what we're asking for this spring is the same amount of money that we would have spent last year, $70,000, to complete the burns that would have been completed last spring this spring in addition to our 2021 prescribed burns. So the way that we plan burns is um, in consultation with our um, herbicide management program and with our native seeding program. So we have everything on a rotation. So last year, because we got out of rotation, we have these hanging burns that need to be completed before we can start implementing other projects. So we'd like to complete them all this year so that we can keep um, the planning process that we already have in place going um, and complete the rest of the work that we had already had done. Okay, are there any questions at all? With that, we need a motion. Do we have a motion? Motion by Charles, supported by Quarles. Any discussion? Hearing none, can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, Commissioner Stokes. Yes. Vanderveen? Yes. Bagley? Yes. Charles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. LaFontaine? Yes. Long? McGilvery? Yes. Nash? And Quarles? Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Can I also say anyone wants to come to a prescribed burn this year? They're very fun, and I'd be happy to send you the notifications when they occur. So. Please feel free to attend. As long as it's not too windy. <laughs> How do I reach Next, Sarah Cook? Nick, I'm sorry, Yolanda? Yeah, how do I reach Miss Miss Cook? Is it through Vic, Victor, um, is it Victoria? Uh, yeah. My method of... Vicky will uh, set you up. Yes, um, no, and you can go from there for i'll send you her in for her contact information okay thanks okay next item is item f 2021 double up food bucks program food fair network grant acceptance melissa 
Uh, good afternoon. Um, this is our, as was just said, the 2021 Fair Food Network Double Up Food Box Program grant. Um, this is a program for our newer commissioners that we've been utilizing at the market for many years now. It's a great program. Uh, the funding source is originally through the USDA, and what it essentially does is it doubles the spending power for fresh produce for people that are using uh, food assistance programs. So if somebody using SNAP benefits comes in and spends $10 on produce at the market, this program will double that and it'll let them spend $20 um, on fresh produce. So it's very, very um, well received program. They're actually increasing our funding for this year because we um, we blew through last year's uh, and actually needed to get additional funding to make up for last year, which they gladly provided. So um, it's a great program and um, we're looking forward to rolling it back out again for this year. Thanks. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we need a motion. Moved by Vanderveen, supported by Charles. Too late, Amanda, sorry. <laughs> um, can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, Mr. Vanderveen? Yes. I can't vote, no. Anybody? I'm sorry? Yes. Charles? Yeah. Herzog? Yes. LaFontaine? Yes. Long? McGilvery? Yes. Nash? Quarles? Yes. And Stokes? Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0, Chairman. Thank you. Next item we have is G proposed COVID 19 memorial event. It'll be held at Waterford Oaks County Park. Dan? Well, we got Sue and Jim leading this one, Gary. Okay, go ahead, Sue. Well, I'm actually ready, Sue, or Gary, I, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of run this by everybody. We did uh, okay. have the opportunity. Yep, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we had a request from uh, the County Executive Culture's Office to hold the uh, uh, an event here at Waterford Oaks, um, and we're really excited to uh, work with them. Um, this this is a really a, a great opportunity, I think, for the park system and for the county. It's a tribute walk uh, at Waterford Oaks, um, and it's for honoring Oakland County lives lost to COVID in the last year. Uh, we're looking at working with a company called Glenmore Trails Company, and they would set up the trail. Uh, it's about a 0.6 mile walk. Uh, they've also done some uh, other events in uh, commerce in West Bloomfield. Um, just it's it's a, I think a, a good opportunity. Um, they will also have uh, an area for uh, uh, people to uh, leave uh, remembrances for their loved ones, uh, such as photographs and other items. Um, and if there's enough interest, they're looking at maybe even extending this through the following week. Right now, it's it's. Um, Looking at if we approve it, they would do a media night on Wednesday, next Wednesday, and uh, the event would run Thursday through Sunday. If if everything goes well, uh, we'd actually open we open it up to the public to be able to come out and see it, view it, and walk it all the way through the following Sunday. Um, how this works right now is they're going to be inviting people um, that have lost loved ones. So that's kind of the first uh, um, send out, and it's going to be a about, I think 900 people a day is what they're looking at that they'd be able to get, uh, be able to walk through this. And what they're, what we're looking at, uh, the overall cost of the event is $28,000. And we're looking at splitting half of that. So it would be $14,000. We do have the money in our budget in recreation program services. Um, so that's what we're looking at. So if there's, if I missed anything, Sue or, or Brandy, Dave. Dave, you have a question. Go ahead. I, I, Jim, I think it's twenty eight thousand dollars, not twenty eight hundred. It's a, from what I understand, Dave. It's over, it's an overall twenty eight thousand dollars, but the portion of Parks and Rec is going to be fourteen thousand. That's correct. Correct. That's correct. We that we would split that with them, uh, and I'm going to speak in favor of it. I think uh, uh, Parks have uh, shown brightly during this COVID nineteen. Uh, what do I say? Nightmare we've gone through, and and this is another opportunity for us to showcase our parks, and and I think it's a great cause. 
Any other questions? Nancy has a question, Mr. McGilvery. Go ahead, Nancy. I'm sorry. Didn't see your hand. I apologize. I didn't hear who is um, uh, running the, the trails for us. What was the name of the company? What organization? It's uh, called the Glenmore Trails. It's a company that's, uh, that does this. They did it in uh, West Bloomfield and I think in Commerce too. Um, if you Google Glenmore Trails, you can actually see their show. I did that um, prior to the meeting um, that we had with them last week. And it's just amazing. It's, it's, it's just really lights up the trail. And it's just, they're going to have music playing during the walk. And you know, there'll be a lot of memories with the light lighting system. Oh, Phil's putting it up right now on the screen. Oh, okay. Kind of and and you know. this is just for families that have lost uh, loved ones through COVID. Is that what you said? Yeah, that'll, yeah that's the plan for uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then if everything goes well, we're going to open up to anybody else would like to come out and see it. And that would be a, on a per donation uh, fee, is, I think, was what they're looking at. Okay. Oh, I think this is a great, great purpose. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jim, I have a question. What do we? What is the donation fee? Is it just a do donation, or is there a set fee for the public? The information that I have that they were recommending, I think between two and five dollars, you know, for the day. And everything has to be prepaid before they come out, um, and they have they'll have to register um, through their through their website. So they actually take care of all that for us. So we just know we'll just know how many people are showing up at six o'clock, you know, six thirty, seven, and then we will have some of our staff um, and volunteers out on the site too to help, you know, make sure everything runs smoothly. All right. Any other questions? Hearing none, we need a motion. I'm moving. Oh, go ahead, Dave. I'm moving. I'm moving. Okay. Is there a support? <laughs> Supported by quarrels. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, Commissioner Bagley. Yes. Charles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. LaFontaine? Yes. Long? McGilvery? Yes. Nash? Quarles? Yes. Stokes? Yes. Jim Vanderveen. Yes. Eight to zero. Motion passes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so very much. Uh, next item we have is H, approval of a consultant firm uh, for the Oakland County Parks and Recreation Executive Officer Search. And with that, I'll turn it over to April. Good afternoon. How is everybody? Good. Oh, good. I see the smile that says you can hear me. So um, I just want to um, say thank you to the commissioner for allowing me to help you uh, work through this process. Um, I will be helping Commissioner McGilvery uh, kind of channel this through as you guys work through um, finding yourself a replacement for Dan. Um, in the meantime, though, we do want to get started on there's a lot of background that I'm going to let James talk to you about. but. We have been using a company called GovHR over the last year. They've already been pre-bid um, through our process through the county. They have been helping us uh, tremendously with our high-level executive searches, um, just due to the many connections that they have throughout not only the state, but the country as it relates to governmental officials. So we thought we felt at this point it would make a lot of sense to bring James into the mix for this particular position as well, since it's been such a long time since you've had a new director. So. I just wanted to make sure that I could bridge the introduction, um, introduce you to James. He's going to go over a little bit of the process. Um, and again, of course, I'll be supporting him and Commissioner McGilvery um, and the rest of you throughout this process as well, but he will be leading the recruitment. So with that, I'm going to turn over to James and let you give an overview of kind of some of our options, what this looks like and how the process might look. Sure. Well, thank you very much, April. And I appreciate the opportunity to talk to the commission today. and. Uh, at least a couple of faces that I recognize um, from my prior uh, life as a city manager here in Oakland County in Rochester. 
I was city manager there through 2015 before starting as a consultant with GovHR. As April mentioned, I've had the opportunity to help the county with the director of economic development, your chief diversity, equity, and inclusion officer, and corporation council, and your health officer. Um, all of these are the that we've been. Um, obviously, we've got great connections in Michigan and in the Midwest, but GovHR also has 26 of me, if you will, in 26 other states. So the way that GovHR is, we'll have a state coordinator. Um, and so we really believe that your Parks and Rec um, director is a national search that we would utilize all of their resources. Um, in terms of process, I'm happy to answer any questions towards the end. You've had a long meeting, I won't belabor it. Um, but the most important part of this process is gonna be that front end. I loved hearing all of the input that was provided to the golf consultant. And I'm going to be looking for some of that input from commissioners individually uh, before we get, or as we get kicked off, I should say. Um, I would wanna to talk to each individual commissioner for about 30 minutes and understand kind of your um, background um, with the position as well as your projected what the traits, skills, um, and qualifications you think are most important. We'll use that for our recruitment brochure, but mostly I'll use it when screening candidates. Um, once we do a recruitment brochure and start the process, that'll take several weeks. Um, I'll create a um, list of candidates that I think are best fit based on those early conversations um, and would suggest with a commission your size, maybe meet with a subcommittee, but certainly I'm open to meeting with the entire commission to review that first big list of all the applicants and then about a dozen or so that I pull out that I would have had pre-meetings with, um, pre-Zoom interviews with, um, just trying to, to understand their fit. And then we, I would meet with the full commission um, and host the interviews of whatever the number that comes out, if it's a half dozen or so that we wanna interview in person or in Zoom, depending on what the uh, restrictions are. And I, I will assure you, we have done those recruitments on full Zoom. Um, but hopefully by the time we get to a place in this recruitment, I would anticipate that we're doing these interviews live. We'll then have a second round of interviews with probably a shorter list. Um, and then I would help facilitate the transition process, including facilitate any type of employment agreement or type of um, agreement you'd like with that individual with, along with April's health. And all of our recruitments for the county, um, we do have a 12 month guarantee if the candidate leaves for any reason whatsoever, um, literally any reason, if they are not there on the, on the 12th month day anniversary, uh, we will do the recruitment again for, uh, for no fee. So it, I've loved working with the county. Um, professional staff is just phenomenal. Um, GovHR does searches like these all over the country. Um, I really focus on Michigan opportunities and, and have several clients here in Oakland County and throughout the state. Uh, but I love working with, with Oakland because it's such an easy place to attract candidates. Um, we, I would expect you'll have a really good pool regardless of who we're doing the recruitment. I hope we will bring a screening process that is really customized to, to your needs that we establish early on in those stakeholder meetings. So I'm open to any questions that you may have um, about the process or GovHR or me. Uh, thanks, James and April. Um, I guess I would like to say that uh, we'll probably be forming a subcommittee, which will uh, I'll, I'll look over all the people in our, on our parks board and uh, pick a couple people, maybe three, that'll help with the interviews uh, and going through those. So I'll announce that at uh, the April meeting. Um, is there any other questions? Hearing none, we need a we need a motion to uh, approve the consultant contract. Um, is there a motion? Move. Moved by Charles, supported by Vanderveen. Okay, can we have a roll call vote on that, please? Yes, Commissioner Charles. Yes. Herzog. Yes. LaFontaine? Yes. Long? Miguel Bray? Yes. Nash? Quarles? Yes. 
Stokes? Yes. Vanderbeam? Yes. And Bagley? Did we lose Commissioner Bagley? I don't see her. Okay. Um, motion passes seven to zero. Okay. Thank you. Barely in a quorum, Mr. Chairman. We better move along. Yeah, I'm trying. Believe me, Dave. Uh, next item is I appointment of the interim Oakland County Parks and Recreation Executive Officer. Um, I have I have named uh, Sue as Dan's replacement. She will serve an in interim period. Um, I think most of you know that Sue is also planning on leaving. And she's gracious, graciously said that she would stay on as long as we need her. So she's got another three, four years to go. But um, <laughs> no, she said she said she could stay as long as we needed her. So that being the case, uh, we're going to name Sue as uh, the interim executive director and uh, the pay to go along with that. Do I have a motion to approve that? Or, or I'll move. <laughs> Moved by uh, Vanderveen, supported by Lance Stokes. Yes. You, you didn't know you were going to support, but I, I made sure you got. No, that's the second time. We <laughs> second <need>. time. I'm <laughs> we need your name in the match, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, all in favor signify. Oh, I guess we got a roll call vote on this. Can we Commissioner Lafonte. Yes. Long. Gilbrey. Yes. Nash. Quarles. Yes. Stokes. Yes. Vanderveen. Absolutely. Begley. Yeah. Charles. Yes. And Herzog. Yes. Motion passes seven to zero. Congratulations, Sue. We look forward to working with you. Well, thank you. Thank you. The loudest clap comes from the executive officer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, he wants to get back to Florida where it's warm. That's why. Uh, okay, next under reports, we have fiscal sustainability. Sue? Uh, yes, we will be at the next meeting bringing back a recommendation on Waterford Oaks Water Park. That's it. Okay, thanks. Uh, ORV Park Update. And that is Melissa. Um, so in the matter of time, on page 177 of your packets, I did a written report, knowing this might be kind of a long meeting. So I am happy to go through it and highlight it, or you can read it at your leisure, whatever you prefer. Read it. Read it. Uh, why don't you just give us, uh, since we got a new member here, um, just give us a brief update on the ORV park. Sure. So really quick, um, we are scheduled to reopen Saturday, April 10th. That'll kick off um, this year's season. So we're gearing up for that. Lots of work behind the scenes, onboarding staff, uh, getting everything set. Um, you'll see in the memo that's in your packet, there is a direct link to all of the positions that we're hiring for. So if you know folks that want to work at the ORB park or at any of our parks, um, that link is in there and you're, uh, we encourage you to share that widely. Uh, the parking lot construction project at the park is beginning, if it's not begun already, beginning in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and next month you'll see an application to that DNR program to fund the second portion of that uh, parking lot project for next year. So we're keeping the ball rolling on that. Um, we're doing a little bit of work at the site to refine uh, and fine tune some of the um, tracks that we have there. So we've rebuilt the track around the bathtub and we're working on the sandbox track now um, to get those ready to go. In the rules that you approved at this meeting, um, we are now requiring flags on all vehicles at the park. It was uh, strongly recommended but not required last year. So that is a big change uh, for this year. So we're going to see how that goes. 
Um, and then we will have uh, Holly Power Sports, our, our vendor um, that bid back in 2019 um, to do rentals at the park. We'll be on site this year uh, providing rental vehicles for people at the park, side-by-sides and ATVs. So we're really excited about that. So there's a lot of other things going on. There's some potential uh, sponsorships in the works that I'm excited to hopefully bring to you in the near future. Um, but we're just working really hard to get open on April 10th. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? And to the newer members, if you haven't been out to the ORV park or any of the members, um, set up a time with Melissa and or some of the some of the staff and get out there and see it. It's going to be a a, a grand new uh, park for us to operate, and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, we'll move on to executive officers report. Okay, uh, your, your last one, Dan. Yeah, the last one, and it's going to be quick. Pages 178 through 189. So we start off on uh, pages 179 to uh, 80, the upcoming events. You'll see that uh, section grow as uh, Brandy's group schedules uh, special events and uh, programs throughout the spring, summer, and fall. Uh, our next commission meeting is April 7th. Uh, we will have a conversation at the executive uh, committee meeting, which is on Monday, March 15th at one o'clock about uh, the budget schedule and how the commission wants us to uh, present. Uh, last year, if you remember, we did have kind of a joint uh, budget meeting, commission meeting, and we got all of our uh, uh, presentations uh, done in one commission meeting so if you're interested in something like that the uh, staff would be in favor of it um, the rose Enbridge pipeline mike uh, donnellan has a report there for you to read um, summer job applications have started if you have any uh, uh, individuals that you would like to uh, refer us to and suggest that they apply please do so uh, we definitely need your uh, help in promoting the parks as a great place to work. Uh, photos displays, uh, Dave, just uh, an update there on our effort to update pictures and to uh, indicate where the picture is uh, taken and what park it uh, belongs to and what the activity is. So uh, Desiree and her team is working on that. We did a, a letter of support for the city of Novi for their uh, uh, grant application to the trust fund. Uh, on page 186, we have uh, the operational plan, what, uh, what facilities are open and uh, how things are being managed pertaining to COVID-19. Uh, Desiree has her uh, monthly report on pages 187 through 189. Des, do you have anything that you want to uh, highlight? Um, the only thing I would say is that um, efforts are continuing and will continue towards hiring seasonal staff because we need about 600 uh, employees this summer. So that'll be ongoing. That's Great. it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Des. Um, Again, I want to thank you for your uh, recognition today, and uh, I'm definitely going to miss all of you and especially uh, our new members. I am trying with your cooperation to be part of an orientation on uh, Monday, the 15th of March, if it works out. Uh, Sue, Gary, and I will uh, uh, meet with you and uh, give you hopefully some additional uh, background information about the uh, uh, park system. So with that, I thank you. And thank you, Dan. Uh, next is the co executive committee update. Uh, I'll be real brief. We discussed uh, the golf and the golf consultant and uh, some of his thoughts and ideas. We also discussed uh, the Oak Management uh, uh trying to get that to an end and make a decision and we did that today so that's good and that's about all we discussed um is there any questions on that 
Hearing none, I'll move on to old business. Is there any old business? Is there any new business? Amanda, you have <laughs> something for us. I do. I'm going to be mindful of time, so I'll just be real quick because we'll be talking about this more. But I just wanted to mention this because it will eventually affect us and our decision making as a commission. Um, as you know, the Board of Commissioners approved a climate emergency resolution in fall of 2019. This has spurred other communities like Royal Oak to have a similar climate resolution. We've also done a greenhouse gas inventory and made reduction goals and currently working on our sustainability plan. And it's um, my understanding that the county is going to do an audit, um, also have a campus and countywide plan, and create an office of sustainability. So I know that Melissa, Sarah, and Jim can probably speak more to the county's environmental plans than I can, but I know that the state and other communities in Michigan are having a goal of net zero by 2050, and I'm sure that the county will have a similar goal. And so I think that the parks could be very valuable for the county in the visibility and promotion of these sustainability projects for public engagement, buy-in, and educational purposes especially in communities that aren't doing sustainability climate planning and implementation just yet. Um, so I'm sure there will be more discussions and information and plans that we'll go through to achieve these goals. But I just wanted to call attention to this now as we make decisions for the parks and to make sure that we're also viewing these decisions through a 2050 and environmental ones. So that's all I've got. Very good, thanks Amanda. Yep. She's been sending a few emails regarding it, so. Uh... Just a few hundred emails this yeah. weekend. Dan, so, go ahead. Gary, I would uh, support that uh, maybe uh, Amanda be part of the uh, sustainability uh, group. Uh, we can do that. That's for sure. You have okay. to watch about a quorum, Mr. McGillivray. Oh, yeah. Pardon? You have to watch about a quorum on, on the appointments. Okay. Uh, I'll get with you, Vicki, and we'll figure out, or Sue, and we'll figure out something. So. Okay. Um, Yolanda. Yeah, thank you. I want us to have on our radar a discussion about deer culling. I just would like to know the jurisdiction of the parks uh, as it relates to Oakland County. You know, it was in the news recently at a non Oakland County park, and I just wanted to know um, what's our, our reach and our scope. But again, this can be on the next meeting. Uh, Sue, can we have a report regarding that at the next meeting in April? We we can provide that. Thank you. Okay. Dave. Uh, after two and a half hours, I'm sure Lance Stokes is asking himself, what did I get into here? But uh, I just yeah, want to welcome right. you to what I call the Department of Fun. So simple as that. Thank you. Well, there's a lot. There are a lot of items to go through. I understand that, but it's uh, encouraging that someone is so that everyone is so enthusiastic and participates. Uh, thanks, uh, and and Lance, this was an uh, an extra long meeting. Normally, they're yeah, not this long, so so uh, hopefully next time uh, we can get it cut down to an hour or an hour and a half. Hopefully, so we'll see. All right, what that? May I ask, uh, yeah. may I ask oh, yeah. a question if Ms. Herzog mentioned environmental and sustainability? My ears jumped up. Uh, if you could, is it possible to email me? I, I don't have your report, or or was it in our uh, meeting packet? I didn't see it. It was not in there, but I'm sure Amanda will be glad to keep you abreast of what's going on. So, yeah. Thank you uh okay with that we're done adjourned thanks for being here